Today is Palm Sunday. This is a special day to remember. We remember how Jesus was cheered and celebrated as he entered the city of Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. He was on a donkey, showing that he came in humble peace. The people had heard about him and were excited to see him. They had seen how he healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, and even raised the dead. They expected that he might save them from the political oppression, and they wanted him to rise up in power and help them. They cheered Hosanna, which means save us. They waved palm branches, which was sort of like waving flags in a parade. These people wanted Jesus to have an end goal that included rescuing them and taking over the government, but that was not the kind of salvation Jesus planned to bring. He knew that what was coming, he would have to suffer, experience immense pain, and be killed. His end goal was the cross. Jesus also recognized that this was God's plan and purpose for him, and that he was going to rescue not just the people of Jerusalem, but all people everywhere. And one wonderful news this is for us. We should rejoice that Jesus was willing to suffer and die. He freed us from sin and death forever. We can give thanks to God every day for showing us a better way to live. Now we are going to have a mini parade, and let's all praise Jesus. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord my God, Hosanna in the highest. Glory, glory, glory to the King of kings. Glory, glory, glory to the King of kings. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord my God, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Good morning and welcome to Palm Sunday. Let's give these folks a round of applause. And thanks to Shirley and Molly for putting this all together as we begin our celebration of Holy Week. I do welcome all of you to our service of worship here in the house. Those of you who are serving with us, worshiping with us on the live stream, we are glad to have you join us too. So we begin this week, we continue to remember what it is that Jesus did for us, beginning with this triumphal entry. If you'll take your bulletin, let's look at the announcements on the back, please. I'm not going to read them all. You be sure and read them. I'm just going to, I'm going to hit them highly. The, the Monday Thursday service will be online only, so you need to watch that at Warsaw Christian Church on Facebook. Our Facebook page will be online. Sunrise service next week, we hope the weather holds, and it's nice and beautiful, and we have it at Bob Weldon's house at 730, followed by breakfast here at the church. This is a potluck breakfast, potluck event, so we need to have pots to have luck with and to have food to share at this annual event. Easter egg hunt still at 1015. Where are you, Molly? Okay. And we need candy. We don't need candy. I remember what we said. Instead of trying to buy candy because we don't have it ready, since, since Sally decided to retire for some reason, we don't have a readily drop off. off well, I guess we can still drop in spikes if he's there. But what we're asking is if you have two or three, five, ten, thirty dollars, what? No, not that much. Just give it to give Molly a little bit, and we'll buy the candy. And we've got the eggs to put it in. So let's just just do that this week, so that we'll we'll have plenty of candy for the Easter egg hunt. No W two W this week, this spring break, and everybody's out. Seekers will be meeting, however, and you see the upcoming activities. I want to report on. Jason and the first nursing home experience, well, the second nursing home experience, this one, he was able to get the thing 
working right and everything went off well, didn't it, Jason? And it was at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. It will be at 10 o'clock on Monday morning each Monday. We will be airing this service to you folks at the nursing home. We welcome you to this service of worship. We will be airing it. We had six people there, including Gladys, who came to the, to Gladys Baker, who came to the nursing home experience. One thing we are, this is going to be challenging, but we're going to try to do this, is to have, get Jason some help so that he doesn't have to be there every, every Monday morning at 10 o'clock. That could get kind of tiring. I mean, man, there are other things that he needs to do, too. So if you can help, please do. Ask Jason. He can, he can help you with this. I'm really excited about this. I think we all are. This is a way that we can reach out beyond our walls and reach to our people who are there and others who are there also. A lot going on. Please, I hope that those of you who are in town and aren't still out for, for spring break next year, or rather next week, will be here for our service and worship. We welcome you. If you're visiting with us, we welcome you to this service. Sally? If you please stand, we'll have our invocation. Dear loving God, on this Palm Sunday, we awaken to the fact that this is the day that the Lord has made. We celebrate and honor Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem as the children marched in with their palm branches. Jesus entered Jerusalem to remind us of the welcoming of Jesus into our heart and of our willingness to follow him. Give us the strength to open our hearts and minds and let Jesus into our life. Be with us today and every day as you walk by our side to guide us along life's pathway. Look around and may we see the beauty of the earth and the glory of the skies. The changes in nature can be witnessed daily as your world changes seasons. This Holy Week, we start with celebration and hosannas of Palm Sunday. But leading up to Easter Sunday, we have mixed emotions. Emotions that are raw with the passion that Jesus prays with all mankind as he prays the Lord's Prayer with us. Now let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. remain standing as we sing our hymn of praise, which is hymn number 93, Praise Him, Praise Him. We will sing all verses of hymn 93.
would you please be seated and the children come back up for the children's moment with Sally. Be sure and bring your proms with you. sit right here. That'll be fine. I want you to bring your palms up with you today because they're so pretty. And today is Palm Sunday, and you all did such a wonderful job of coming in. Tell me, have you guys ever been to a parade before? Have you ever seen a parade? Yes. Have you been in a parade? No. Uh, I did be in a parade before. Oh, boy. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Did you shout at the parade? Mm -hmm. Did you shout and cheer at the parade? Okay, but we shouted. What did, what did Bobby sing when we were coming in the door? Do you remember what he sang? He sang Hosanna. I know. Do you know what Hosanna means? No. Hosanna is like is praising, praising Jesus' name. That's what Palm Sunday is. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on, a, on the donkey, and the people praised his name, and they waved their palm branches, and that's what you guys were doing when you came in. That was a wonderful thing. Like I said, parades are fun. Parades are a way to show that you praise something, that you have fun. Yeah. There's different parades at different times of the year. And this time of the year, we have Palm Sunday. And we praise Jesus. We praise the name of Jesus, that Jesus is, comes into our heart. And hopefully, we take him out of our heart and share his, his presence with everyone. Want to bow your head for a word of prayer? Dear God, dear loving God, as we go through this week, it is Holy Week. We have a lot to celebrate this week. Leading up to Easter is a fun time. Today is a good day. We celebrate Jesus coming into Jerusalem with our, with our palm branches and shouting Hosanna. Let us remember that joy that we have in our hearts each and every day of the week. In all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you guys can go back. You did good. You, you can take that with you. It's okay. Go ahead, Jane Rose. Take your palm branches with you. It is so wonderful to have children here to do this with the palm branches, to wave them. Great time, great program, great way to start it off. Thank you, Shirley, Molly, everyone that had something to do with it. Grace, where are you? Oh, yeah, back there with your headset on. You did a marvelous job reading. Thank you. Let's turn to our hymn of prayer, hymn number 114. We sang this for a while for our opening uh, response. We'll sing it through one time, Thou Art Worthy, number 114. Birthdays. I'm, you do, it's hard to imagine. But we're going to start out. Shirley, we sang to her last week. Leroy Tunstall, how old are you? I can't give all that information. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 66. Okay, all right, 66. April Mayon, who's still in Florida, I'm sure she'll be. She and Rick will be coming home soon. It's on the 6th. Dakota Smith is on the 11th. Summer Thomas is on the 14th. And then we're going to get to the middle of April. 
and hopefully Tony will be home from all of these trips around the country. Molly was telling me he's been all over the country this week in his new job, and we'll celebrate with him. So let's celebrate with these folks now by singing Happy Birthday. Praise report, Transylvania University women's basketball team. Several of us here in this house went to Transylvania and graduated. Spike, me, the twins, who else? Let's see, uh, Theo, Barbie, Maggie, I, a lot of Transy graduates for the first time ever in the history of the oldest school west of the Alleghenies, won the Division Three women's basketball tournament yesterday in, was it Dallas? Were they playing? That's, yeah. And so I nearly wore my, my Trancy t-shirt today, but I thought, well, it's Palm Sunday. Somebody might think that's over the top. But we are proud of the pioneers. I went to school a lot longer than, ago than Spike and Barbie did, let alone the Olden Dicks. And at that time, Women's basketball was a different animal, and uh, I mean, it was played differently. Uh, there's probably not many of you here that ever saw the way it was played with six people. Only half of them could cross the court, the half court. You ever see that, Bryce? Have you ever seen that demonstrating where, I mean, it's, it's just really bizarre. But at Transy, the basketball games worked like this. If you went to the game at the gym, you had the UK game on in your ear, and you were studying well, that's how the school it was. You know, we studied and we listened to UK and watched our women, but we're very proud of that, so I wanted to, 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 to shout out with that. Prayer request, if you'll turn with me to the prayer list on the back, one person we do not have on the prayer list is Josh Neal, our former sheriff, and I'm sure many of you have heard about Josh. I don't normally go into things extensively, but Josh was in an accident uh, one of the trucks fell on him at the speedway where he is, you know, he's, after he didn't run for sheriff again, he uh, went to work out there guarding security and so forth. And he has quite a few broken bones. He's in a lot of pain, but I've been in contact with Millie, his mother, who's also on the prayer list. She's in Florida now, and he's doing okay. So we'll continue to hold Josh. I think he's just very, very lucky. Uh, any time a, a truck falls on you, that's you've got to be lucky to get out of that. Do you know have any updates on it, Lark? He drove himself to the hospital. He what? He drove himself to the doctor. Drove himself to the doctor. To the hospital. Well, what Millie told me, how many broken bones he had, I don't know how he got in the car or the truck. Anyway, let's hold Josh in our prayers. Millie also, and Jim Bruce, Simidor's father, is hospitalized in extended care. And we just really need to hold Jim and Semidor in our prayers. Please have a look at the extended list here. Remember these folks. If you want to know more about them, check the names that have in the parentheses that place them on the prayer list. Angela? Did she? I, she died. Yes, she has been on our prayer list. Caitlin Epperson, her family, uh, fundraiser for her several months ago. We do want to remember her family. Bob? A dear friend and cousin of Leroy's and mine, Carol Gastrite, passed away at the age 80 unexpectedly at her service yesterday. Wonderful woman. Good. And, uh, we'll remember her then. Others? Yes, Tina. Good. And she is a product. Well, Jason knows as well as Miss Loveline is just alcoholic. Yeah. I'm recovering. But it's been a prayer of mine for years. And he's been sober two months. That's great. Two months. Praise, praise the Lord. That's great. Great. Any other praise reports, prayer reports? <clears throat> Surely I can see her eyeballs over the edge of the piano, but she doesn't have a mic, so she doesn't have anything she's going to say. Thank you again for this wonderful beginning of the service. Let's pause for a moment of quiet meditation.
Our Father God, we gather here in your house as we do each week. We thank you for the blessings that you have given us, for the challenges that we face that we are able to overcome with your help and with the help of others, for all of the things that make life what it is. Sometimes we wish it could always be just smooth sailing and everything be fine, but today we celebrate and we know that that is not possible because of what happened to your son. We remember on this Palm Sunday the entry into Jerusalem and then the catastrophes of the rest of the week. We pray as we gather here in this house, as we come into this place, that those palm branches that our children shared with us today and waved may indeed be emblematic of our praise of you through your son Jesus and through all that he did for us and all that he continues to do for us. He came, he lived, he died, he was resurrected. And while he was here, he taught us. He taught us how to live better. He taught us to love one another. He taught us that the things that are important are the things of how we get along with you first and with others. He said this repeatedly in various different places, to love you with all our hearts, all our souls, all our minds, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We are in a time in our country, oh God, where that's a challenge. It's a challenge because where we, it seems, used to compromise and meet and talk, now that doesn't seem to be the way we operate. We pray your help, your guidance, your direction, so that we don't have to pick sides, but rather that we work to be able to come together again as your people. Because as the people of this great nation are divided, as we find ourselves increasingly now, that weakens us. That weakens our resolve. It weakens our strength. And there are those who are predators on the outside who would look at this and say, they are weak. We can take them. Or they can be ours. Or whatever it may be. Oh God, help us Help our leaders on all sides of the aisle and all, all places up and down the roads to be understanding of the love that your son asked us to experience and to share for other people. That we may learn to love people, that we may learn to love one another, care for one another as he cared for us. During this week, O oh God, we will remember his last supper. We will gather to celebrate him emerging from the tomb, we will gather in Resurrection Sunday to remember what it was that he did and how he gave us the opportunity for new life and for life everlasting. We ask your blessings today on those whose names we have mentioned, those who have been in accidents, those who have lost loved ones, those who are hurting for whatever the reason may be. We thank you too, O oh God, for the blessings that we have heard of, and we share them and pray that that may continue. Help us, O oh God, to be your people, to be the sheep of your pasture, that you may forever be our shepherd. In his name we ask it. Amen. Mr. Weldon, you're doing a two for today, huh? Yeah. First, I want to say grace. Great job, all of you. That was good. You went slowly. And second, um, I've been off for about six weeks having a song, so trying to get the cobwebs out, but I'm glad to be back. Okay. <clears throat> All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. You are the King of Israel and David's royal son. 
Now in the Lord's name coming, our King and Blessed One. The company of angels are praising you on high. Creation and all mortals in chorus make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. To you before your passion they sang their hymns of praise. To you now high exalted our melody we raise. As you receive their praises, accept the prayers we bring. For you delight in goodness, O good and gracious King. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. You can sing something at the benediction if you want to. You might know something. Done for the day. Laura, how are you doing? You ready to start singing yet? She said yes. She said yes? Okay. I have long been a fan and a follower of Jesus Christ. I like him. I love him. I love the message. I love what he has to say. I love the way he was tough enough to live his life and to point out to others that they were wrong in some of the things that we were doing. Sometimes it seems that in our faith and in our Christianity that we come across thinking that Jesus was some kind of a mild, meek person who just let others run over him. Not the case at all. Going to the cross, the experiences that we're going to celebrate this week, was not a sign of weakness. They were not a sign of weakness. They were strength. They were the willingness to follow through with the plan that he and God had made. I'm a fan of this. I'm a fan of follow through. I'm a fan of the, the leadership that he offers the things that he taught us, I think, are so very vital to the way that we live life that we can weave them into our lives and experience them. It's rather ironic, however, that the man who does this and who did it is the man who was going to be crucified for our sins for our glory. You would think that the people who were waving the palm branches, those who were throwing down their coats, their cloaks, hollering Hosanna, he comes, our king, waving. Probably if there had been a high school in Jerusalem, think of that, Jerusalem High School, it's a good idea. Jerusalem High School would have probably had a band the band would have been there as, as we have these many parades in Gallatin County. I'm, as, I'm really jealous. Franklin County, we don't have any parades. And if we did, there'd only be two people show up. And that'd be the mothers of the kids in the band. Don't have that kind of community. These people gathered, I'm sure their lives were boring enough. I'm not saying that yours are. But I'm sure their lives were such that a parade and a triumphant entry like this was enough to bring them together Hopefully in support, if nothing else, out of curiosity. 
The irony of this is that it was called a triumphal entry, triumphant, triumphal, that it was called a victory. And within a few short days, the victory would turn to disaster. And the same people who were shouting Hosanna, King of the Jews, our leader, our Savior, the same people were calling for him to be crucified. I wrote this week in the prospectus about this, but this experience was bittersweet. I think that word is sometimes turned around, particularly in this experience. It's sweet, bitter. It's very sweet when you hear people applaud. Applause helps you, you know. It, it makes you feel good. You smile, you grin like a possum. I've always heard it said that, that I must not have had enough applause in my life. That one of the things that helps people keep their hair is applause and to keep the color in their hair. It's just kind of, a, it's kind of one of those things that stirs up those endorphins. It makes folks feel better. A triumphant entry. This was indeed a sweet moment. But can't you think that as Jesus rode that donkey into town, that barred donkey, can't you imagine that since he knew what the outcome was going to be, that it was a little stressful, that it was difficult? Because if you knew that the same crowd, the same people who were saying, here you are, we applaud you, we praise you, we glorify you. We're going to be the same people who would turn on him in just a few short days or a length of time, whatever it may be. And the sweet then becomes the bitter. So the moment is a sweet bitter rather than a bitter sweet. It's not something that is going to have a positive end to it. I want to read the first six verses of the scripture for today. We'll end up reading all of it. This is the gospel according to Mark. Matthew, Mark, you remember that's the second one in the New Testament. This is from the 11th chapter, and I'm going to eventually read verses 1 through 10, but I want to start with the first six, which is what Grace read that was paraphrased in the presentation at the beginning. And when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Why are you, why are you taking this colt? All you have to say is, the Lord has need of it and will send it back immediately. The Lord has need of it and will send it back immediately. It's almost like the Star Wars, you know, when they do the force thing, when they pass over, you will give him the colt. It's kind of what they said. You will give him the colt. You will loan him the colt. He will bring it back. And they went away and found the colt tied at the door, out in the open street, and they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? And they told them what Jesus has said, and they let him go. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. This passage in Mark is found in the other Gospels too. In Matthew, there's a verse added to it that is interesting because it is so typically Matthew. And this verse is in the 25th chapter, actually two verses, 20, the 20, I'm sorry, the 21st chapter of Matthew. I'll read it to you, 21st, verses 4 and 5. This is what was being fulfilled in the prophecy, this cult. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humbled and mounted on a donkey and a colt, the foal of that donkey. Disciples did as Jesus had directed them. These, this passage, these, four, these two verses, they're found in Isaiah, 
That's in the Old Testament. And in a tiny book of Zechariah in the Old Testament. As we study and learn about Matthew, we find that through history, Matthew's intent was to try to hold the Jewish people and to convince them that Jesus was the Messiah. So that's why he includes that in his passage. He wants to say to those who are listening to this story, listen here, this guy is doing, Jesus is doing, what was told in the Old Testament that he was supposed to do. That's what he's doing. I'm going to quote you the verses. Mark doesn't quote those verses. Mark just says, take the colt, tell them it's okay, tell them I'll bring it back. But it was important for, in the, in the course and the history of Christianity developing, it was important for the Jewish people who converted to Christianity to embrace the notion that Jesus was the Messiah. And these, vo- these verses point them in that direction. Question for us, what proof do we need? What proof do we need that he's the Messiah? Talked about that in Betty's Sunday school class today. Disciples at first didn't recognize him. Later on, there would be Thomas who wanted to see the, the, the holes in his hands, the scar on his side. What proof do you need? What proof do you need that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God? What proof do you need? I can't answer it for you. I can't answer it. I don't, I don't know what your answer is. Mine is I see it in other people. I see it in actions and deeds. I see it in these scriptures, in the words that Jesus said, in the way that he reached out to touch us. What proof do we need? Secondly, verses 7 and 8 of the Mark passage. It's time to mount up. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and they threw their garments on it, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others spread leafy branches, which they cut from the fields. And those who went before him and those who followed cried, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. Here's the crowd. Here's the cheering. Here's the bands playing. Here's everything going on that Jesus is riding on in majesty. Ride on, ride on in majesty. That's been our theme for this day. Jesus is riding this colt. But don't you know, don't you just feel the, the, the torn nature in his heart? I'm trying to look for exactly the right word. To know what's going to happen. To know what is going to happen. They spread their garments on the ground. They shouted. They hollered. They were for him. And yet, a few days later, they were shouting something differently. Verses 9 and 10. Blessed is he who comes. Blessed the name of our father, David. What do you say? What can you say or do to... Share Jesus in your heart, in your lives. What do you do? Because this same group of people, in a very short period of time, some of the same, not all of them, the crowd didn't, didn't go to this parade and then go over and have dinner at Jewel's, then say, okay, now we're going over and see what's happening over in Herod's court. But they didn't do that. It was some time. Not everyone went, but some did. Then they were outside the court when Jesus was brought in, and this verse from Mark, also, or rather the 14th chapter of Mark, I want to share this verse with you. Just one verse. This is verse 64. This is when they are asked, what do you want us to do with him? What do you want us to do? Verse 64. Why do you still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And all the crowd, all the crowd, all the crowd said he deserves death. Is that irony or what? 
Is that just ironic that this is the same group of people or a majority of those group of people, the same people who said, Hosanna, King of the Jews, Hosanna, our Savior, Hosanna, the one that's going to give us a better way to live. And here they are, recorded in Mark's Gospel a few chapters later, saying, look how he's blaspheming. They, they had asked him, they said, are you the Son of God? And, and he said, yes, I am. And the high priest tore his garments and then said this, you have heard how he blasphemes. What is your decision? And they cried, he deserves death. We are at Palm Sunday. We are at the glorious day that we celebrate Jesus' entry. We sing nice, peppy songs. We remember in Scripture the experience. And then we are going to be turning slowly to the next chapter in this. This cross... We change banners, we change decorations on the stage, we turn things around for different programs, but the cross never moves. The cross doesn't go anywhere. The cross stays right there to remind us that this is the experience, and it wasn't fun, it wasn't anything, anything that ends up when someone is cruelly killed is not certainly fun. That cross stays right there to remind us of what it was that Jesus did for us. I would ask you the question, the question that was asked in 64, 64th verse there. What do you say about Jesus? If you had been in that situation, what would you have said? Would you have stood and hollered, Hosanna, he's king of the Jews? Or would you have said, oh, crucify him, get him out of here? We know we can study Peter, we can study the disciples, we know how as the trial unfolded, they turned their backs. They said, I don't know him. It's a tough time. I don't know him. I'm not going to get my skin in the middle of this thing. I don't want to get hurt. In some ways, we talked to Mount a moment or two in Sunday school about that. Maybe in some ways, it was the best thing that they did because they lived to fight another day. And every one of these disciples, yes, they may have turned their backs on him, and hid in the crowd at the, at the trial. But they ended up sacrificing their lives. And many of them, most of them, all of them, in fact, dying horrible deaths because they stood up and stood with Jesus. We are called today. What do you say? What do you say? Who is Jesus? Is he Hosanna? Is he the king? Is he the Son of God? He's the Savior? All of these things. And the one who offers us a still more better way to live. May we bow together in prayer. Our Father God, we thank you for the privilege to come into this house. It's fun, it's exhilarating to wave the palm branches, to sing the songs. We know Jesus must have felt the same as he mounted up on the donkey and rode into town. But he knew there was a dark cloud behind it, and it had to be a bittersweet moment. Help us, O oh God, to never put our faith in a bittersweet position. Let us be positive. Let us be the ones who lead others to Jesus through our example. During this holy week, may we experience the things that he experienced vicariously, and know that he is there to travel the road with us. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning and our invitation to the Lord's table. Hymn number 191. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3 of the theme of the day, Ride on, ride on in majesty. 191. May we stand.
we come to the time where we gather around the Lord's table. This is an open invitation to each and every one of you here today, each and every one of you at home. Doesn't make any difference if it's today or if it's a day of the week that you tune in and watch us, that's, that's great. We want to remember that this is the Lord's table and everyone is invited to participate. As we prepare our hearts and minds for communion, let us pray. Dear loving God, be with us today, be with us each and every day, and let us focus right now on the here and now, on these emblems here before us. As we partake of these emblems, may they be food for our souls, and in turn, let us go out and spread the good news of Jesus to everyone. We can spread that good news in many ways, just in the way that we smile at one another, the way we treat our neighbors, the way we do unto others as we would have done to us. In all our prayers, we pray that thy will be done. Amen. And on that night of the Last Supper, when they gathered in the upper room, Jesus was gathering for the Passover meal. The disciples didn't know that this was going to be their Last Supper, but Jesus took the bread, he took the loaf, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he passed it among them, saying, Take, eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us take the bread of heaven together and remember Jesus. And in a like manner he took the cup, passed it among them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant. For as often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us drink from the cup of forgiveness. Shall we pray? Lord, we come before you today with thanksgiving. Having taken the bread and the cup, our hearts overflow with gratefulness for your love and sacrifice. Your desire to have a relationship with us was so great that you made a way for us to be with you. Thank you for your love and for which surpasses all understanding. Thank you for enduring the pain and humiliation of the cross in our place and declaring us righteous before the Father. We don't deserve your grace, but you have extended it to us freely. Thank you, Lord, for it, for it is in your name we pray. Amen. Sponsoring benediction. Right on, right on in majesty, as all the crowds Hosanna cry, through waving branches slowly ride, O Savior, to be crucified. Amen.